Hello. This video is the first in a sequence of videos uh, introducing you to conjugated systems and the way that we can understand uh, the bonding in conjugated systems using molecular orbital theory. I'm going to start off by talking about the different classes of dienes uh, using pentadiene and its isomers as my example. First here we have 1,4-pentadiene. Uh, this is classified as an isolated diene. The two alkenes in the molecule are separated by an sp3 hybridized carbon. Uh, <clears throat> and so any other kind of situation where you have alkenes separated by sp3 hybridized carbons uh, is an isolated diene. 1,3-pentadiene is called a conjugated diene. Here we have sp2 hybridized carbons in a contiguous chain. And that's what conjugated means, sp2 hybridized carbons in a contiguous chain. And then finally, we have 1,2-pentadiene, which is a cumulated diene. Uh, and that means we have alkenes sharing a carbon. And in the case of 1,2-pentadiene, that central carbon there is actually an sp hybridized carbon. So it's going to behave a lot differently. I want to compare to you the stability of the different isomers of C5H8. Um, now I've thrown in some alkynes for, for comparison because there's something really interesting there. Uh, we're going to use heats of formation. Uh, if we use a common reaction with the same products and the same, you know, or the same reactants, uh, so this case five carbons and four hydrogen molecules to make C5H8, the comparative heats of formation tells us something about the relative stability of the compounds themselves. Uh, and so starting with the isolated diene over here on the far left, we have, um, <clears throat> you know, starting from this isolated diene, we have a uh, heat of formation of 106.3. Then the uh, conjugated dienes, and I have both the, the cis, or the trans and the cis, 75, 82 kilojoules per mole. And here are my accumulated dienes. They're actually two different isomers, 140 for the terminal one and 133 for the internal one. And I have plotted the alkynes here on purpose because the uh, accumulated dienes actually have the same kind of stability or, or less stability than the corresponding alkyne. And so they actually have some things in common with alkynes and their behavior. I just really wanted to highlight here the difference in energy between the isolated diene and the conjugated diene. This is called the resonance stabilization uh, of that diene. So there's about 30 kilojoules per mole in resonance stabilization here. And again, uh, to draw your attention to the similarity and stability between the uh, accumulated dienes and the alkynes. I just really wanted to talk about the cumulated dienes once more. They're a really interesting group of molecules. The simplest of all is allene, actually a three carbon species. Um, and just to further the analogy or the comparison to alkynes, the two pi bonds in allene are perpendicular to each other. And you can see that from this space filling model on the lower left that the hydrogen atoms are not in the same plane, also shown in the lower right. And in the orbital kind of pictures I've drawn here in the upper right, I'm gonna put my hands in front of my face, the pi bonds and allene are perpendicular to each other. So this is a molecule that's gonna act like it has two independent pi bonds, a little bit like an alkyne might. And again, to remind you that this center carbon is sp hybridized. So it's gonna behave a little bit differently. Conjugated dienes have continuous chains of sp2 hybridized carbons. And that means that you have a, uh, a sequence of p orbitals available at all of the carbon atoms, and they can all be aligned together. And you can have, you know, pi bonds that are perpendicular, or sorry, parallel to each other, which allows the, the shape of the molecule to assume a planar conformation as shown by this structure here. In the next video, I'm going to introduce you to the basic ideas of molecular orbital theory, which is very useful for describing the bonding of conjugated molecules. Uh, the types of bonding theories we use typically have been using up to this point are not sufficient to explain everything that conjugated molecules do. Thank you for watching.